Hi, I'm Andre Gaines. I'm the director of Dick Gregory, How to Survive in America. I mean, the first day we launched the campaign, we got a shout out from Judd Apatow uh, via Twitter. Um, the following day, or I think two days after that, we got another shout out from Bill Maher on his uh, Facebook page. Countless calls from uh, celebrities, some who are you know, famous, some not so famous, talked with the Dick Gregory and his people and they told us that they got a lot of support from people for the project. And we were, you know, sort of on the roll for, uh, for making our goal. We had a lot of uh, high value donors on Kickstarter, which was, you know, a surprising thing to us. I mean, most people were donating over a hundred or two hundred dollars. Um, and we were normally looking at it somewhere in the fifty dollar range that we were looking for people that were going to back the project. So it was a overwhelming show of support for the project and for Dick Gregory and everything that we were working on and so we were really surprised by it and ultimately it was uh, something that led us to the, the goal of actually getting ready to make the film. Probably by the end of the week, by Friday, we, we were clear that we were trending towards the goal. Uh, as a matter of fact, trending past the goal. Um, at that point, I think we had just crossed about 100 backers. Um, we were trending towards about um, seven or 800 backers by the time it was all said and done. And, uh, and it was getting noticed, and it was getting noticed in kind of a big way from a lot of different people. Um, we got um, uh, you know, press uh, from the Tribeca Film Festival, uh, we got it from IndieWire, we got it from Variety, Hollywood Reporter, Huffington Post. We got a lot of love from folks, and so it was clear that we were headed towards that direction. And then um, finally we ended up getting this call, and it was just kind of like, yeah, this is what, what, uh, what we want to do. And that's how we ended up where we are now. The immediate next steps are to, um, <laughs> really for us, is to show love to the folks who supported us first and foremost so we want to try to give something back to them even though you know kickstarter rules were not necessarily obligated to do such a thing it's just something that we want to do for the fans of the film and fans of dick gregory that really came through and showed the type of love that we weren't really expecting but something that we we're extremely grateful for so that's our first step uh, the second step is that we are laying out our production plan and that production plan will include a series of different things that we want to try to shoot, a series of different um, scenes that we want to try to shoot with Dick Gregory. Um, we want to try to get over to DC where he lives. Um, we want to try to do some um, filming at Million Man March which is going to be on October 11th, um, or I'm sorry, October 10th. Um, and then we also have some other plans to, to shoot with him throughout the rest of the year. So that's really the, the next step for us is to set up that plan going forward, which we already had some of that in place and in motion. We had been shooting with him since the beginning of the summer, late June, early July. And so we'll continue that through the, um, through the rest of the year. And with any luck, we'll be able to deliver the film by 2017. Comedy and activism is like a unique Dick Gregory brand. Like, that's who the guy is. Uh, he's been like that from the very beginning. And uh, you see his comedy albums, Two Sides of Dick Gregory, another comedy album, Light Side, Dark Side. He sort of has a left and right side of his brain that he himself has, you know, uh, been able to create this unique brand out of. Um, uh, folks that have sort of followed after him have not necessarily been able to replicate the uniqueness of that brand. Um, you have folks like Paul Mooney, who are you know amazing comedians. Harry Belafonte, of course, is not a comedian, but just an, an activist, um, but an entertainer slash activist that sort of follows in the same uh, breath and line of somebody like a Paul Robeson more than he does necessarily a Dick Gregory. But Dick Gregory has always been this guy who's been down on the front lines and um, marching with uh, Dr. King and standing with Malcolm X and doing all these things and then going up in front of, at the time, during the you know, civil rights era, going up in front of all white crowds, um, largely um, uh, completely segregated, um, uh, in many cases, you know, Southerners or bigots or things like this, and having to sit up there and be heckled and be yelled at and be demeaned and push his way through 
a comedy routine and end up having them love him at the end of that routine in a way that they never thought that they would and certainly not in a way that they ever thought that they would accept a, uh, you know, or see a black man um, at that time. So he was the first. His, this, this guy is the, the guy who started it all. He was the one who broke the color barrier on national television. Um, at the time, there was a show called uh, The Tonight Show was with Jack Parr, just like The Tonight Show you have with Jimmy Fallon or anyone else like that. And uh, they would allow entertainers to, black entertainers to come on the show and to sing and dance, but you couldn't stand flat-footed in front of a white audience and actually deliver, uh, and actually talk to them, and actually deliver a monologue or any type of speech. And uh, Dick Gregory was the, the first to do that, and not only so, he was allowed to come and sit on the couch next to Jack Parr, which was in the same vein as somebody like uh, Johnny Carson, who made a whole slew of comedians, including Jerry Seinfeld and, and the like, by allowing them to come and sit right next to him and talk to them and operate on his level. And uh, so that's, that sort of was the precursor to the uh, you know, Johnny Carson era that Dick Gregory ushered in for a whole slew of, of uh, comedians and entertainers. So I think that that's what, what sets him apart. He's the origin of kind of the whole, that whole thing. And, uh, and he set up um, comedians in ways that people don't, just can't imagine ranging from Richard Pryor to Bill Cosby and Eddie Murphy and Chris Rock and all and Dave Chappelle all these guys revere him in a way that uh, is really astounding the idea of the takeaway from the film is really to ex respect the original uh, pay homage to which they all do you know I mean like I don't have to you know say something like that to a Kevin Hart or I mean all these guys know who Dick Gregory is and revere and love him um, for my generation and a lot of generation and other generations after my generation, a, a lot of folks don't know his name. A lot of folks don't know who Dick Gregory is. They may have heard him. Uh, he certainly has an iconic look about him. So if you've ever seen him, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, that, I can put a name with a face. Uh, but as far as what it is that he did for, um, entertainers, what he did for, for black entertainers, female entertainers, what he did in the civil rights movement for African Americans and women and all other ethnic minorities that sort of, you know, follow the, the Civil Rights Act and, and bills that were passed during the 60s is, is, uh, is really just extraordinary.